Okay, so this video is going to go through uh, UV mapping your 3D objects or screen surfaces to match your media server's pixel output. So we're going to take the, the pixel map from an output window and use that as a UV map for some 3D objects that can be used in a, media, in a previous suite. Uh, so those objects are referencing the right part of that video surface. So I've set up a basic scene here. This is what we're going to create, this kind of stage. We've got four columns here, um, a rotated screen in the middle and kind of a DJ banner screen with some angled LED panels on the side. Uh, I've built out an output map. So using Division After Effects template, I'll put a link in the description for that. So I make this nice output map here. I've got the four columns, my square and the banner, all nicely packed on a 1920 by 1080 uh, video surface. So I want to map this to 3D objects so I can bring them into the previous suites. So I'm going to jump into Blender. There's a brand new Blender uh, project. I won't go too in depth with Blender, but I'll, I'll quickly go over how to do everything. So got two windows here. So this top one, I'm going to delete everything. So hit A to select everything and X to delete. And I'll drag up this window, second window down here, and I'll switch that over to my UV editor. So I've got my UV canvas just here. As standard, a UV map works on two coordinates. They're called a U and a V coordinate. Uh, in Blender, they still call them X and Y for the vertical and horizontal. But they actually start down the bottom here uh, and go up to up in the Y and across in the X. And uh, that's kind of opposite because generally for a output map or a lead screen surface, we start in the top left corner up here as our zero point, so you can see X and Y is zero. And this is also a square. So first of all, I'm gonna switch this over to match our resolution. I'm gonna create a new map. And I'm gonna set that as 1920 by 1080. And there are now in that 169 ratio. And I can actually drag my image in here for reference. So under image, right now it's generating a black color. I'm just gonna switch over to single image all right, so now I've got my map in there. I can see that and use that as a reference to build out my scene. So I need my column I'll switch into the top view just so I'm working straight down for the moment. And I'll create a new mesh. So I'm Shift A, brings up my add menu, and then I just wanna create a plane. So we're just working on a 2D surface, so we don't need a cube or a box at this moment. We just need a flat mesh to be our, our video screen. So I've got a square, square plane just there. Uh, if I switch over to item menu up here, I can actually work in real world dimensions uh, metric. Uh, so I know that I've made my square panels here 500 by 500 millimeters, so half a meter. So I'm one and a half meters across by three meters tall, counting those panels. So 1.5 by three meters there. Um, one thing I wanna make sure is that I'm not messing up the scale here. I wanna keep this all scaling at one. So to reset that after I've changed these values, we got object, apply, all transforms. And now I've got this scale down to one. So we're, only, we're not scaling anything on any axis if I can set that back to one. Uh, and now that I have this surface, I can start mapping it. Uh, so I hit tab to edit into edit mode. Up here you can see which mode we're in. So in edit mode, I'm gonna select all my surfaces, so all my points. I want to map it. So to make sure I've got it the right uh, orientation, I'm going to use a UV project from view. And I just project straight from the camera. So you can see we've just mapped it here, this little box just here. Uh, first of all, I can't see anything on this at the moment. If I switch over to shading, I'm still not seeing any texture. And that's because we need to set up a material. So this is just a reference. It's not actually sending it to the surface yet. So switch on the material tab just here and I'll create a new material I'll call that screen surface. And rather than a white color, I'm gonna use an image texture. And I can choose that, because I've already loaded an image into Blender, I can just choose it from the list now, from that drop down. And there we go, now you can see we're actually referencing Kind of like an input output map we're sampling a section of this map uh, as a coordinate system um, and we could actually quite quickly just bring that over and kind of scale it to fit 
we wanted to, we could do a really quick rough map that way and that'd be fine for a lot of stuff. If you're just doing a quick previs, that might be all you need. Uh, but for this, I'm gonna try and get every, every point matched up to the right correct pixel. So straight away, I know everything on this side is zero on the x-axis and I can put it in straight these values just here under image UV vertex. So x, I'm at zero. And these ones here, I know come all the way across to the next point, which is 288, so x. And as you can see, this isn't the right thing. So we're actually gone too far. So we scale all the way back to one, we can see that the UV system is actually just working on a value of zero to one, almost like a percentage. Uh, so I could, if I wanted to uh, set these as a percentage, so I could do uh, 288 divided by 1920, and that would give us the right values. But that's a lot to work and it's a lot to remember. So you can actually switch it over to pixel mapping, uh, to pixel coordinates. So this menu just here, uh, pixel coordinates. So I check that, we're now in pixel coordinate mode. If I go back to image, I've got that 288 value. So now we're working actual pixel coordinates matching that image there. So 288. Uh, the next thing that trips us up is that the Y coordinates are still backwards. So look at these points, we're actually at 1068. And that's not, normally this would be a zero value on the Y axis, but we're still going from the bottom here. So we're going backwards on the Y axis. So we wanna start from the top, which is actually 1080. So I can set that as 1080. Um, which means this bottom one, we've actually, we actually need to take away from 1080 to get down to that point. So we're coming down 576 pixels. So we'll go 1080 minus 576. And there we go, we've mapped our first column. And the rest are pretty simple. Because the next three are exactly the same, we can just move the whole thing over. So I'll move this out of the way for now. I'll copy and paste a few of these. So just copy and paste all these out. I'll rename them. Just space them out on the, the X axis here. All right, now, so number two, I tab in. I need to move this across. So if I select all these points, hit G, I'm in move mode. So now I can move this around. If we look down the bottom, I've got some more shortcuts. Once I tab to G, X, Y, I've got a couple of other constraints I can tap into. So escape to get out of that, G and then X, and now I'm constrained on the X axis. The next thing I can do is I can just tab in, type in exactly what I want. So plus 288. So G, I'm moving around. If I look down, I've got these options down here. So get out of that, G, X, and I'm just on the X axis. And again, I can just plus 288. And now I'm on that directly on that one, so that 288 offset. So I can the other ones, tab into edit mode, grab this, GX plus 288, done, I'll do it again. And for column four. All right, and those are my four columns. So I'll copy and paste again to get this can be my square for my main middle screen. I'll put that back in the center. I know this one is uh, three meters by three meters, so I'll change those dimensions to three meters by three meters. I reset my scale, so I go object, apply all transforms. Make sure I'm selected, object apply all transforms. Tab into edit mode. And I want to make sure I'm actually doing this the right way again. So I'll select all my points and then do UV project from view. And hit G, I can move this into the center. I'll scale it up slightly. And now I want to just find those points again. So I know everything along the top is at 1080 on the Y. So I can put that straight in. Uh, I need to figure out the bottom, which is minus 576. So 1080 minus 576. Now I know the X point here is 1152, so I can select those and put that straight in. And then my final X point is the 1152 plus 576. So plus 576, so I can do all the maths in those boxes. 
caveat, so I've got my screen here, and I'll duplicate that now to the banner screen. And I'll just move that one down. And I know this is uh, six meters by four meters. Sorry, by two meters. Again, I'll apply those transforms so that my scale is correct. Apply all transforms. Tap into edit mode. I'll do a UV project from view again. Let's put it roughly in position. And now I need to figure out these points. So I know everything I'm down this side is on the zero X axis. Uh, everything on this side is at that 1152. So X1152. And now I just need to figure out the Y. Uh, so this top one is coming down from the 1080. And we need to minus. 576 and the bottom one is 1080 minus 576 and then minus the height of that which is 384 and there we go so we've now mapped everything into this map and there's our stage so I'm going to lay this out roughly like the stage so we can just bring the whole thing into the um, previous as a single object so back in object mode I'm just going to select everything A I'm going to rotate it on the x-axis 90 degrees so now you can see that floor plane there the wireframe uh, I'm going to move everything up on the z-axis so G to move and Z to lock on the z-axis there we go uh, I'll move all these panels back a little bit so I'll move them back on the y-axis so G Y and I'll just move back these ones slightly a bit more G Y and you back a bit more with GY. And I actually want to rotate this square 45 degrees on the Z axis. Sorry, not the Z axis, on the Y axis. So 45 degrees. Okay. Uh, so the last thing I just need to do is I needed, I had this curved, this screen was actually curved in my DJ setup. And I could have this as separate surfaces, so I could cut these up. Um, but it would be nice to, to bend this surface and right now in edit mode we've only got four points to work with so if I move these around you can see we're just stretching the whole surface so to be able to basically need to cut a crease line here and that's called an edge just switch over to edge mode up here now I can select the edges I want to add some more edges along this geometry and because we're working uh, with lead screens which are uniform we can just add a whole lot of edge loops so control R and if I just hover over here you can see I've started and whilst I'm still hovering if I scroll up I can just keep adding um, an even amount or an evenly spaced amount and eventually because it's all even we'll find a point where it grabs the screens. Click once um, and then escape to make it jump to the home position and now I've got a whole lot of edges on that vertical line and now I can fold along here if I wanted to. I could also add these edges so if I do control R again I can actually add on this axis too. All right so I'll go back into vertex mode so I'm selecting these points so I want to move all of these points. I want to fold all of these points around. If I hit rotate now, see we're not rotating. Even if I constrain to the Z axis, we're still warping our shape. We don't want to bend anything because we can't bend the real world screens. I want to hinge it on that point. So if I switch into rotate mode, I can see where my rotate cursor is. It's going to the center of all those points. I want it just on this side. And to do that, I can actually choose, uh, right now it's set to medium point. If I choose active element and I need to select one point, it'll rotate on whatever that point is. But right now it's still just one thing. So if I select all of these, I need to select one point. So shift to deselect and then reselect. And now I focus on that one point and I can hinge just on that vertex. And I can do the same on the other side. Grab everything I want to move, shift to deselect that one point and reselect it and then hinge it around. And now I've got that nice bend right on the panel join tap to exit and those are my screens so i can now export all of these objects click export into whatever format i need so fbx gltf or obj are pretty much the standard for most of your previous applications and i'll look at how to bring these objects in and map them in your previous suite in another video